Welcome to Business Review, a daily program that delves into the latest and most significant economic stories, from stock markets to currency news. Business Review covers the most up-to-date developments in the global financial world. A dozen U.S. multinational firms, including Apple Incorporated, Ford Motor Company, Walmart Incorporated, and Walt Disney Company have expressed their concerns that the WeChat ban may adversely impact their business in China. U.S. President Donald Trump announced that the U.S. would ban any U.S. individuals or companies to do business transactions involving the WeChat app, owned by China's Tencent Holdings Limited. Even U.S. firms, whose businesses have little to do with the smartphone industry, expressed their concerns, that is, if they cannot promote their products or process businesses on WeChat, it will greatly hinder their Chinese business and reduce their ability to connect with Chinese consumers. U.S. firms hope the government could elaborate on the specific meaning of the executive order to ban WeChat. The Los Angeles Times has said some White House advisers argued that the risk of possible further blows will stop U.S. companies from doing business in China. In the meantime, critiques said the U.S. government seldom intervenes in the market and the move by the Trump administration may break this convention. WeChat is a platform with 1.2 billion users worldwide, covering services such as mobile payments, messaging, e-commerce, official communications and other functions. The Los Angeles Times reported that some U.S. market analysts believe if the Apple App Store removes the app under the worst scenario, its sales in China will plummet 30 percent. Analysts pointed out that besides Apple Incorporated, companies such as Starbucks, KFC, Walt Disney Company and the McDonald's Corporation that are all highly dependent on WeChat to provide services that include online catering and reservations to Chinese consumers may become the victims of the ban. Craig Allen, president of the U.S. China Business Council, said those living outside China don't understand how the ban will impact U.S. companies. Compared with their rivals, firms that don't use WeChat will be at a serious disadvantage, he added. After months without museums, cinemas, Mexico City residents began exploring them again this week, even as authorities continue battling the pandemic that has so far killed 55,000 people in Mexico. Mexico has the third highest death toll worldwide from the virus, which has hammered the economy and caused unprecedented disruptions to life in the metropolis of 22 million people. The capital has been one of the areas hardest hit by the pandemic, but as cultural centers and businesses reopened with new safety measures this week, some Mexicans could not wait to get back to venues that have been closed since late March. The reopening ran contrary to some other parts of Latin America, including Bogota, where seven neighborhoods enter lockdown in Argentina, which is extending curbs against the scourge until the end of August. Mexico City Mayor Claudia Scheinbaum said that she's monitoring hospitalization levels to see when to open more activities. Rodolfo Escoto, Deputy Director of Operations at Cinemax, said reopening was a test of the movie theater's chain's ability to inspire confidence in people and, above all, to ensure that they're no longer afraid to go out. After months of confinement, Carmen Oliver, a 32-year-old clerk, was delighted to be back at the cinema. Some saw the reopening as crucial for mental health. A coronavirus testing site has been set up on the U.S.-Mexico border in San Diego, offering free virus tests to travelers crossing into California from Mexico. The testing site located at the San Ysidro Port of Entry, which is the world's busiest, offers free tests with no appointments needed to travelers crossing by foot from the Mexican border city of Tijuana. A ban on non-essential border travel between Mexico and the U.S. has been in place since March in an attempt by both governments to limit coronavirus infections, yet 
Cross-border traffic has been busy. Mexico's northern border region is home to a large population of U.S. permanent residents and U.S. citizens, including dual nationals, who are typically free to cross back and forth. The U.S. President Donald Trump said he would agree to up to $25 billion in funding for the U.S. Postal Service if Democratic lawmakers make concessions. President Trump blamed Democrats for what he described as blocking aid for Americans after talks on coronavirus relief efforts stalled in Congress. In a series of tweets earlier, he wrote that he directed Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin to get ready to send direct payments to all Americans and that he was ready to have Treasury and the Small Business Administration send out more payroll protection program funds authorized in previous legislation. He also said he was ready to send more money to states and local governments, but did not identify an agency or mechanism. At the end of each tweet, he wrote, Democrats are holding this up. Employees of Minsk Tractor Works voiced their concerns to tens of thousands of people on the sixth day of protests, calling on Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko to step down. Minsk Tractor Works General Director Vitaly Vovic described the protest as unsanctioned. Employees from companies including Gordno Azit, Zabinka Sugar Plant, as well as the Minsk Gear Factory, demanded fair elections and an end to violence. A former Soviet collective farm manager, Lukashenko, is grappling to contain the biggest challenge in years to his rule of the country, seen by neighboring Russia as a strategic buffer against NATO and the European Union. The protests were joined by workers from other industrial plants that are the pride of Lukashenko's Soviet-style economic model, including the Minsk automobile plant that makes trucks and buses. The protesters accused Lukashenko of rigging the presidential election to win a sixth term, the president alleging a foreign-backed plot to destabilize the country has dismissed the demonstrators as criminals and unemployed. This has been Business Review, your daily source for the most critical financial stories. Tune in next time for the latest financial news impacting the world economy.